Sunday, the 16th of April, 1944. Remember yesterday's date, because it was special for me. When a girl gets her first kiss, it's always an important date. Last night, I was sitting with Peter on his sofa bed, and he soon put his arm around me. I put my arm round him too, and we sat very close. We've sat like this before, but never as close as we were last night. He wanted me to put my head on his shoulder, then he rested his head on mine. Oh, it was so wonderful. He touched my cheek, my arm and my hair. At nine-thirty we stood up to go. Peter had to check the building. I was standing next to him. I must have made the right movement. I don't know how, because he gave me a kiss. It was a kiss through my hair, half on my left cheek and half on my ear. I ran downstairs and didn't look back. Friday, the 28th of April, 1944. Last night, Peter and I were sitting on the sofa as usual, in each other's arms. Suddenly, the usual Anne disappeared. The confident, noisy Anne. And the second Anne took her place. This second Anne only wants to love and to be gentle. Tears came to my eyes. Did he notice? He made no movement. Did he feel the same way as I did? He said very little. There were no answers to my questions. At eight-thirty, I stood up and went to the window, where we always say goodbye. I was still Anne number two. He came over to me, and I threw my arms around his neck, and kissed him on his left cheek. I was going to kiss his other cheek, too, when my mouth met his, and we kissed each other again and again. Last night was a great shock to my heart. The gentle Anne doesn't appear very often, and she's not going to go away quickly. Oh, Peter, what have you done to me? What do you want from me? But if I was older and he wanted to marry me, what would I say? Anne, be honest. I couldn't marry him. Peter isn't strong enough as a person. He's still a child. Tuesday, the 2nd of May, 1944. On Saturday night, I asked Peter whether I should tell father about us. He thinks that I should. I was glad. It means that he's sensible. As soon as I came downstairs, I went with father to get some water. While we were on the stairs, I said, Father, when Peter and I are together... We don't exactly sit at opposite ends of the room. But you've probably guessed that. Do you think that's wrong? Father paused for a moment, then answered, No, I don't think it's wrong. But Anne, when you're living so close together as we do, you have to be careful. Later, on Sunday morning, and do a he said more to me about it. You must be the one to be careful. It's the man who always wants to go further. In the outside world, it's different. You're free. You see other boys and girls, and you can play sport and do a lot of different things. But here, you see each other every hour of the day. Be careful, Anne and don't take it too seriously. Father says that I shouldn't go upstairs so often, but I still want to. Yes, I'm going. 
Wednesday, the 3rd of May, 1944. For the last two weeks, we've been eating lunch at 11.30 on Saturdays. From tomorrow, it'll be like that every day. That will be one meal less each day. It's still very hard to get vegetables. This afternoon we ate some bad cooked lettuce. Add some bad potatoes and you have a meal fine enough for a king. I haven't had my period for more than two months, but it finally started last Sunday. Although it's a trouble and a mess, I'm glad. You can imagine we often say, Why are there wars? Why, oh why, can't people live together peacefully? No one can give a really good answer. Why is England making bigger and better aeroplanes and bombs and at the same time also building new houses? Why do governments give millions each day for war when they spend nothing on medicine or poor people? Why must people go without food? when there are mountains of food going bad in other parts of the world. Oh, why are people so crazy? It's not only governments who make war. No, the common man is guilty too. We give our governments the authority to do it. There's something in people that makes them murder and kill. Unless all human beings change... There will still be wars. I'm often sad here, but I still see our life in the secret annex as an adventure. It's dangerous, but exciting. I've decided that I want to live a different kind of life, not like other girls, and that I won't be an ordinary housewife. Living here is an interesting beginning to my life. And that's why I laugh at the amusing side of it, even when it's dangerous. I'm young, and I'm strong, happy, and cheerful. I feel that I'm growing up more every day, and that the end of the war is not far away. Nature is still beautiful, and the people around me are good. Every day, I think what an interesting adventure this is. So why be sad or frightened?